This is the Amalfi Coast in Italy. And this good looking guy is me. Exploring this paradise for five days together with my girlfriend Meg and her family. This video combines the classics with the unexpected, useful tips and most importantly a great overview of why this area is such a buzzing tourist magnet. So if you're considering to visit the Amalfi Coast or you already booked your trip, then this video will give you like a first impression and be very helpful to plan your trip. So let's get it started with some facts. Generally a good time to visit the Amalfi Coast is between April and October when the weather is nice and sunny. The peak tourism season is from July to early September when also all the Italian people are on vacation and the temperatures go up until 30 degrees Celsius. We were there right at the beginning of September and the summer heat has not passed and it was still pretty crowded. You can choose to stay in one of the many charming villages alongside the coastline. The most famous ones are Amalfi, Ravello or Positano. We stayed in a beautiful apartment near Amalfi with a great view over the ocean and lemon trees in the garden. I think it was about 400 euros per night for four people. Quick tip, it is smart to pack light because Amalfi is well known for its many stairs and you'll be walking a lot of steps for sure. Getting around at the Amalfi coast can be a bit tricky because of the narrow roads, the steep cliffs and the traffic. During the high season, you definitely don't want to be renting a car because the traffic is horrible and there's absolutely no chance that you find a parking spot anywhere. A better option is to hire a private driver in advance if you want to go to certain places and depending on the trip and the distance, this will cost you about 100 to 400 euros. There are a lot of buses that go to the main destinations, but as a tourist, it can be a bit tricky to figure everything out because mostly they're not on time and sometimes we even had a hard time to actually find the bus stops. Taking a taxi would be an easier option, but obviously it's more expensive and during the peak hours, it's also very hard to get one. Last but not least, you can travel from one coast town to another without any traffic jams by ferry. The trips are more affordable and you can also enjoy great views on the coastline. You can even go all the way and visit nearby islands such as the Isle of Capri, but we will talk about that a little bit later in the video. Other options that we did not try out on our trip would be renting a scooter which could be a bit sketchy in the traffic or hiring a private boat which must be beautiful but for sure expensive. Getting to the Amalfi Coast is not too difficult. You can fly directly into Naples and from there it's only one and a half hour drive to get there. However, with the traffic it can easily turn into a two to two and a half hour drive. Since renting a car just doesn't make sense during the high season, the next best option would be hiring a private driver, which will cost you about 100 to 200 euros. For smaller travel budgets, you could take a ferry from Naples or there's also a train to Sorrento where you can then switch to a bus which will eventually bring you there. But especially during a hot summer day and with all your luggage, it could really make sense to trade in maybe a night out in a restaurant for a private drive in a nice cool van with air conditioning. Another advantage of hiring a private driver is that you can make a stop at our first highlight of the trip, exploring the ancient city of Pompeii. So we just got here to Pompeii, which is an ancient village which got covered in ash when the volcano Vesuv erupted like years and years back in time. Everything got like conservated underneath the ash and we can go and explore it right now. I'm excited. As you explore Pompeii, you are walking in footsteps of ancient Romans, witnessing their daily lives frozen in time. Every corner tells you a different story, from the grand villas to the temples or even the grand theaters. Can you get me some popcorn? A single entrance costs about 20 euros and if you're really interested in the history of this place, I would recommend you to get a tour guide. There's like so much to discover and they don't really put up like a lot of signs to like read about the things. It's definitely smart to get a guide because it is huge, there's so much and uh, it's easy to get lost for sure. Also, it is important to bring enough water because there's almost no shade between those ruins and on a hot day, the sun will crisp you up real good. Your statement to Pompeii? Much too hot? Yes. But nice. But nice. Did you feel like you were walking through history? Mm. I would, I don't know what I was looking at. <laughs> 
After all that traveling and exploring, it is now time to soak up the sun and dive into crystal blue waters at one of the countless beaches on the Amalfi Coast. While most of the public beaches are packed during the main season, there are some hidden gems and private beaches that serve a bit more privacy. At some places you then have to pay a little entrance fee of about 20 euros, but then at least you get your own beach chair where you can lay down and relax. We found this nice spot right outside of the port of Amalfi and we had a great swim with a view of the beautiful coastline. Pro tip, don't sit down in any random rock pools because you might end up with a huge rash on your back, like I did. Another adventure where you can admire the beautiful landscapes of the Amalfi Coast is hiking the Path of the Gods. So today we are hiking the Path of the Gods, which is supposed to be one of the most beautiful hikes in the entire world. This hike starts in Bamerano and then goes all the way to a little village called Nocelle, which is close to Positano. The total distance is about 5.6 kilometers and it takes about two to three hours. The sometimes rugged path requires moderate fitness level and especially during hot days, it is smart to avoid the midday sun and for sure bring enough water. It's not a bad view, not at all. Also hiking shoes with good grip will definitely be helpful. Slippery rocks everywhere. And that's why I'm risking my life right now. I'm a Slipposaurus. So we did it. High five. Right at the end of the hike in Nocelle, you can reward yourself with an ice cold lemon slushy and enjoy the postcard views on Positano. From there, it is possible to catch a bus or a taxi that brings you to Positano, but without knowing what we would get ourselves into, we decided to walk down all the way to the coastline. <laughs> you like the stairs? No. no! There's still more! Because of our unpleasant descent, we could not really enjoy Positano, so we headed straight to the ferry port to catch a boat that would bring us back to Amalfi. The last challenge of the day was to wait in line in the boiling sun until we could finally board the jam-packed ferry. I guess we just made some horrible decisions that day. We should have started the hike a little bit earlier, then for sure we shouldn't have walked down all those stairs. And if we would have been a little bit earlier at the ferry port, maybe we could have avoided like the peak hour. But besides that, we had a good time. But if there is one thing that will make you forget about all of the struggles of a day like this, then it is the exquisite Italian cuisine. From fresh seafood to some of the best pizzas I've ever had in my entire life, every food lover will be in paradise at the Amalfi Coast. And let's not forget about the lemons. The Amalfi Coast is well known for its lemon groves and they use it in almost every dish from pasta to the famous limoncello. A great dining experience we had was in a restaurant right at the beach and you could only get there by using their private boat shuttle and for sure the best way to end every eventful day is with the homemade gelato from one of the many ice cream shops in the town. Mm, that's the best. Today guys, we are heading out on a boat like this behind us to the little island Capri. It must be a beautiful place, a lot of things to explore, so we don't lose time, let's go. If you're traveling to the Amalfi Coast, you definitely have to schedule in a day trip to the Isle of Capri. This island is well known for its beautiful landscapes, the countless luxury hotels and its colorful villages in the middle of the steep cliffs. For about 30 euros, you can catch a ferry from almost every town at the Amalfi Coast. And then you also have a little coast sightseeing tour included in this trip. After about one hour, we reached the island and then the plan was to go once around it so that we could see the famous Faraglioni rock formation. But due to big waves and bad weather, we couldn't do that. Instead of that, we stopped in a protected bay where we could jump off board and have a swim in the deep blue water. Ah, oh, that was so refreshing. So we got off the ferry after a little swim and now we took a little bus that brought us up the island to the town called An Capri. And uh, the special thing here is, look at that, we have a lift. 
with chairs and you're flying all the way uphill to the peak of the island where you must have an amazing view. And once more, we had bad timing because there were some thick clouds up there that blocked the view. But at least from time to time, we got a little window where we could like spot some things at the coastline. And for sure, it was a great experience to wander along the streets of the town Capri and admire the nice buildings and the expensive shops. So my last highlight of the trip was to experience the magic of the town Amalfi at night. As soon as the sun goes down, the busy streets and the packed beaches disappear and the narrow streets and the plazas show themselves in a complete different way. It almost feels like the day tourists have continued their journey and everything just becomes more relaxed and easy. The town comes alive with colorful lights and the streets fill up with the sound of laughter and music. Paired with a glass of good Italian wine, this is the perfect way to wind down after a day of exploring and it is also the perfect way to end our adventure at the Amalfi Coast. If somebody asked me if I would go back, my answer would be yes, but definitely not during the summer months. We were a bit naive to think that at the beginning of September the crowds would have already be gone. Also, the Amalfi Coast is probably not the best fit for a tight budget. For sure, it would be possible to save money by just eating home-cooked meals or just traveling by public transport, but I think then in the end it just takes away too much of the whole experience. Sadly, I kind of think the best way to enjoy this place would be on a private yacht or in a luxury hotel where you never have to deal with like common tourists like me. But the reason why the Amalfi Coast is so packed is because it is such an amazing place that you can't find anywhere else in the world. As soon as you're there, you just get sucked into this Italian dream with all those romantic cities, the beautiful landscapes and the delicious food. So if you can choose the right season for your trip and if you're willing to spend maybe a bit more money and some crowded beaches and some traffic jams don't stress you out too much, then the Amalfi Coast definitely has to be on your travel bucket list. I am sure that we could not cover all the hidden gems and places in that short period of time. So if you have any questions or also travel tips, then just feel free to write them in the comments. If you enjoyed watching that video and if you would like to say thank you Sandro for all of your work that you did here then just hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you in my next travel and outdoor adventure. Goodbye! We are recording some new YouTube videos today. Ha ha ha! I need more water. Oh, my battery is low. More water for me. Okay, where have we been? We